Hi, thank you for joining me on my sociology video. Today we're going to be walking around my neighborhood and discussing sociology and religion in society. So religion is a institution in society in which people look towards something bigger than themselves and then take part in practices and beliefs that show their devotion to the greater power. Most people consider themselves to be religious because they feel very out of control of their lives and religion gives them a place to put their trust and hope for the future. Faith is a belief in something that surpasses ordinary knowledge and guides one's life despite other people's beliefs. I agree that faith is inescapable because we all are going to believe something and whatever that is we're going to put our faith in that and it's going to come out through our fingertips. We're going to live that out and just like I said before that is the definition of faith living out what you believe and showing your devotion to whatever you believe in. So if you're believing that there is no God, you're going to live like there's no God and you're going to uh, participate in worldly things and, uh, and things in this world that are, going to, that are going to show that you don't believe in a God. A presupposition is any assumption that guides a further conclusion. So presuppositions, letter A. Uh, the presupposition here is that the Bible is true and that it's God's word. Letter B. The presupposition here is that the Big Bang Theory is correct and that there is nothing beyond what we see in this world. Letter C. The presupposition here is that there is no way to know the real truth. Letter D. The presupposition here is that there is something more than this earth and that there is something bigger out there. Letter E. The presupposition here is that for individuals, real knowledge is not attainable. Letter F. The presupposition here is that Muhammad knows the truth and the Quran is the real truth. Letter G. The presupposition here is that rationality and debate is the only way to know the real truth. Number four. So when I did my religious survey for my lacrosse team, I came across the fact that a lot of people don't have religion and that a lot of people are making up truth as they go along. A lot of my friends didn't really know what to say when I asked them what the purpose of life is and uh, if they're religious or not. They said that they're not religious and uh, that they don't really need to be. So in my religious survey, I was surprised to see that many kids didn't really know what to say when I asked them what the purpose of life was. It was kind of scary for me to know that a lot of these kids that I spent a lot of time with don't really know why they're here or uh, what to do with their life. Many people weren't aware of what a presupposition was, and therefore they didn't know what their presuppositions as an individual were. It was interesting to know that uh, something that I take for granted, knowing what my presupposition is and something that I'm learning in school, other kids don't have a chance to learn that. Hello, welcome back. Uh, here we are in the wonderful forest of Monta Vista Christian School, um, back by the football fields and stuff, and uh, today I'll be talking to you about uh, society and religion. In my opinion, in today's world, at least in American society, there is no relationship between uh, faith and science. The relationship between faith and science right now is very separate. Um, in modern culture, many people believe that science is very separate from uh, faith and that science has all the true answers and faith is just kind of uh, this mystical thing all in our head. Um, but really, that is not the case. What I think it should be is science and faith should be intertwined. And when I say intertwined, I mean that uh, science should be a supplement to faith. Uh, faith is a foundational belief in something, um, and science should support that. Um, and if it doesn't, then there's a key flaw in the faith and in the belief that the faith is based upon. All Hindus believe that there is a three-in-one God named Brahman. Brahma is the creator, Vishnu is the preserver, and Shiva is the destroyer. They believe that society should be run under the caste system, and this, uh, we'll talk about later, cont contributes to the social conflict perspective. Hindus believe in karma, the idea that uh, anyone's actions will, in the future or in their present life, will affect them greatly. Uh, so say, for instance, if one helps someone on the street and gives them, uh, gives a homeless person some food later on in their life or in their future reincarnation, they will be blessed with, uh, with good karma. The Hindu 
Jews also believe that uh, based on your deeds, you will come back as a higher life form or a lower life form. So based on karma, your reincarnation could include any of the following. You could become a bug, you could become a prosperous ruler, or a homeless person on the street, depending on uh, all the good deeds and bad deeds that you've done throughout your life. The overarching theme and the goal of Hinduism is to reach Nirvana. Nirvana is a place where you are removed from the constant rebirthing and reincarnation uh, that Hinduism wraps its ideology around. Like I said before, the social conflict for Hinduism, uh, one of them at least, involves the caste system. And the caste system um, brings about much inequality. A social conflictist would say that, um, that the caste system holds people down and it doesn't allow them to rise up out of inequality. And it doesn't, because it's the culture, uh, there's nothing that's done about it. Um, the inequality stays there for centuries uh, and it, it never gets dealt with. Uh, a structural function uh, yeah, A structural functionalist would say that Hinduism helps society by putting an emphasis on the deeds and karma of oneself and that because of that everyone wants to do good. This this will benefit society and help it to continue to grow. Secularization is the process of society stepping away from recognizing formal religion. This can take uh, place in one's home, in one's self, in one's community, or in even a country. I believe that the 19th century thinkers were right and wrong. I think that they were right because what they were saying was that most countries would start moving away from religion, and as we see here, the 19th century thinkers were correct. Almost all the countries in the world say that there is no religion for their state. They deny religion, therefore they are secular. The way I think the 19th century thinkers were wrong is that they didn't take into account individuals. They didn't think about how individuals would react to secularization. Um, I don't think that religion will ever go away from our society because individuals will always be looking for a higher power. Uh, something else to put their hope in. And as long as people are out of control of uh, where they're going after they die, and as long as people are scared of that, um, their religion will never cease to exist. And even when there is some security, such as Christianity, knowing where you can go to heaven, knowing that you can go to heaven, there will always be uh, that sort of religion in society. Question number eight. What is fundamentalism? Fundamentalism is any belief that requires a strict set of rules and a strict compliance to these rules. Fundamentalism is a great thing, as long as it doesn't break the mores and folkways of our society. Fundamentalism is good for society as long as it doesn't break mores and folkways because it allows for a strict set of rules for individuals to cling to for those of us who are very religious, I realize that I haven't talked to you about a Christian's place in society. I believe that a Christian's place in society is uh, definitely not passive and most definitely not uh, off in their own little world, just at church with other Christians. But I believe that they should be uh, out in the world, out in, in the slums, out with the homeless, out with the people who don't believe in Christ. Uh, trying to spread the good news of Christ, um, and not only that, but also letting their beliefs influence what they do every day. Um, as a Christian, I believe that uh, this is where we find all our truth. This is what tells us uh, how to live our life, and this is the Holy Bible. In politics, Christians should um, not be afraid to stand up for what they know is right instead of going for glory and trying to get to be the governor or be the president just because uh, most people don't believe what you do. So uh, just standing up for what you know to be true and what, you, what your beliefs tell you to um, as a Christian, I think that's how you should interact in politics.